Hello, my Teletubby diamonds. Beware of the basement man. <laughs> now, you know, I don't use profanity, nor do I support profanity. But when there's a good point that's being made, I think we are old enough and mature enough to know how to eat the meat and throw away the bones. You know, I don't condone profanity, but the way this man is breaking it down, he has his style of speaking. I am Lonnie B. That's his TikTok. I am Lonnie B. And what he's saying here, it has some valid points. A lot of the, a lot of the things I agree with. And then again, there's some things I don't. Let me share that with you. Listen up. Take your time while you out here dating. Okay. Really? Okay, ladies, listen up. Take your time while you out here dating this shit, bitch. Because the worst thing that you can do is fuck that nigga that's living in the basement at his mother's house. Because by you having your own place, oh, it's going to be hard getting rid of him, bitch. He's 41 years old. You just adopted a child. I'm telling you right now, bitch, don't fuck with the basement, man. See, I know what happened. He gave it to you real good. Because he be in that motherfucking basement and shit doing them push-ups. So he know how to get to the destination. Then when you move him in, you realize you doing every motherfucking thing. Because his mother told him shit. You bringing in the groceries and shit, bitch, okay? He just watching you put the shit away. Then you get tired of this motherfucker. You say it's over. And he say, oh, you breaking up with me? Now, when a motherfucker say something like that to you, bitch, that's words from a serial killer. He gonna be hard to shake. So you decide to move on and find you another man. So this new man start coming to your house and shit. And he realize every time he come to your house, there's a man watching him from the bushes. Fuck is this, Michael Myers? No, bitch, it's the basement man. <laughs> then you start realizing strange shit start to happen. You wake up in the morning for work. You go outside to your driveway and your car sitting on bricks. You don't know what the fuck just happened. You call your new man and he say, I'm about to come and pick you up, baby, and take you to work. He go outside and look for his car is gone. Bitch, then all of a sudden you realize you in a Lifetime movie. Then when you finally get to work and get situated at your desk and shit, somebody calls the job and make a bomb threat. Then the whole office got to evacuate the building, bitch, and it's thunderstorming outside. Then on the same day on the other side of the city, your new nigga calling you saying, somebody keep knocking on my mother door and running. Why they doing that to my mother? She in a wheelchair. Then the new nigga get frustrated. He got enough common sense to realize none of this shit ain't start happening in my life till I start fucking with you. Maybe we should see other people. So then you head home sad and depressed and before you can pick up the phone and call one of your girlfriends and tell her what happened there's a knock at the door you go to the door and there he is standing there with flowers bitch the basement man <laughs> and all you can do is shake your head and say mm, mm, mm. come on in okay late <laughs> now you know he says all you can do is shake your head and say ha Come on in, man, because I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm just like, yeah. no. Okay. When it comes to the basement, man, or any man in your house, you don't have to worry about how you're going to get them out if you never move them in. You see, why create something that can turn horribly wrong down the road? And we know that people change. I know I've changed. I don't. I'm not the same person that I was when I was 15. I'm not the same person that I was when I was 25 or when I was 35, 40. I'm a totally different person. And when people change, it's not always for the best. They may be this way this year, but what are they going to be like next year? And I'm done playing Russian roulette with a loaded gun when it comes to my life and when it comes to my health. You understand? Now, uh, uh, what Lonnie B... <laughs> I am Lonnie B. That's his uh, TikTok, like I said. He says, you know, because the man, he laid it, laid it on you real good, meaning the sex was really good. I've never had nobody lay sex on me that good. And I've had the best of orgasms. Trust and believe. I've had mild. I've had medium. I've had explosive. I've had orgasms that was like, what? <laughs> and no, after it's over, yeah, it's time for me. Wash him up. And yeah, I'm back, back focused. And, and, and I don't care, even when you're gone, yeah, short, you, you think about it sometime, but I'm so busy with so many other things, I don't have time to sit up there and dwell on how, wow, that was amazing, and that was just like mind-blowing, and blah, blah, blah. I've never had that kind of sex, but there are some women, obviously, out there who sex is, is, is something that can weaken them, to make them put up with so much crap. No, when it comes to orgasms, baby, I have the rabbit and I have the rose. And even with those, I've had like mind-blowing multiple orgasms. So there's nothing that that dude can do that this rose and this, this, this rabbit can't do just as well. 
And my love language has never been physical touch. You know, there's some people who they like hugging, they like holding hands, they like the intimacy, the constantly up close on you and hugging you all the, oh God, no. That would freak me the hell out. That's not my love language. My love language when it comes to men is acts of service and gifts. Show me where a man spends his money and I'll show you what he values and what's important to him. And when it comes to acts of service, like running errands, repairing things around the house, helping with the cooking and the cleaning, acts of service. That's my love language with men. With my children, it's quality time that you spend with me and um, acts of service. You know, I don't need the physical touch. And when it comes to words of affirmation, that's some people's love language, you know, where they want you to compliment and praise them all day. They're not into hearing the truth. My, I, I don't want that. I don't need constant uh, praise and compliments and you don't tell me truth. You see, I prefer you tell me the truth because that to me is a true friend. But you have people, I have two people in my life right now and their love language is words of affirmation. And trust me when I tell you, they don't want to have anything to do with the truth. Don't you ever tell them the truth about anything because they'll be ready to throw you under the bus. So you have to constantly praise and compliment, praise and compliment, child. It's exhausting. But anyway, like uh, Lonnie B says, beware of the basement, man. You don't have to worry about these things if you never move him in. Now, when it comes to a man staying at home with his parent, I don't care if he's 60, 70, and he's at home with his parent if he's not married. Because the Bible says the only reason for a man to leave home is to join a wife. So if a man is single, why should he go home to an empty house all the time when he knows he don't want to get married? Marriage is not for everyone. So why not? My son left home when he was 33. But my son has always been a hard worker. He paid his share of the rent. He paid for his own cell phone. He has his own car. He always had like two jobs and he was going to school, got his bachelor's, then he got his master's. Now he's a social worker, counselor, and a therapist. So there's no reason for a man to leave home just to go home to something empty. How many of you know what loneliness feels like? How many of you want to go home to an empty house constantly? See, I don't mind living alone. I don't want to be alone, but I don't mind living alone. But you have a lot of people especially men, they're not good with that alone thing. So why not stay at home with your mother or your parents, normally with your mother? Because men in the same house, grown men in the same house, that's always some kind of uh, a rivalry egos all over the place. You know, the, 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 the husband get jealous of the son because the son is viral, strong, young, you know. So, but if you have a single mom and she has her son living at home, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't care if the son is 100 years old. If he's not married and if he knows marriage is not for him, why should he, you know, have to pay all of these bills when you could split things 50-50? That's just common sense. That's just practical. Like me, I love a mama's boy because if you love your mom, I know how you're going to treat me. I already know. Anybody who speaks badly about their mother, they can never be a friend of mine. I don't care how toxic she is. Because these women don't care how toxic their husbands are and how toxic these men are. So like I said, you know, there's nothing wrong with a man living at home with his mother until he finds a suitable mate if that's what he wants. Have you seen the kind of women that are out here now? <laughs> Good luck trying to find a decent one. So as long as he's paying his fair share, he's not up there with video games, don't want to work, don't want to what? No, no, no. My son was very hardworking. He cleaned the house better than I do. And I'm immaculate. You have to see his place where he lives now. This man lives a very organized. He has his whole thing together. His channel is L dash majesty. Check that out. Mm -hmm. But like he said, beware of these, these kind of men. I, what do I recommend for you? My beautiful diamonds. What do I always recommend? I always say stay single. First Corinthians chapter seven recommends it too. your husband. Isaiah chapter 54 verse five makes it very clear. You already have a husband. Jesus Christ says, I am your Lord. I am your real husband. But for some women, that's just not good enough. 
They feel that a man, a physical man, is going to be their savior. He's going to protect her, provide for her, because Jesus can't do that, according to her. Yeah, okay, whatever. Okay, he's the one that's going to lean and teach her. I guess Jesus can't do that either. But whatever, it is what it is. But you don't have to have these type of problems if you don't put yourself in the situation from the jump, from the beginning. You won't have to do what you hear, not what you hear right here. I'm going to play it again. Because sometimes you have to reiterate things. Come on, Lonnie. Okay, ladies, listen up. Take your time while you out here dating this shit, bitch. Because the worst thing that you can do is fuck that nigga that's living in the basement at his mother's house. Because by you having your own place, oh, it's going to be hard getting rid of him, bitch. He's 41 years old. You just adopted a child. Telling you right now, bitch, don't fuck with the basement, man. See, I know what happened. He gave it to you real good. Because he be in that motherfucking basement and shit doing them push-ups. So he know how to get to the destination. Then when you move him in, you realize you doing every motherfucking thing. Because his mother told him shit. You bringing in the groceries and shit, bitch, okay? He just watching you put the shit away. Then you get tired of this motherfucker. You say it's over. And he say, oh, you breaking up with me? Now, when a motherfucker say something like that to you, bitch, that's words from a serial killer. He gonna be hard to shake. So you decide to move on and find you another man. So this new man start coming to your house and shit. And he realize every time he come to your house, there's a man watching him from the bushes. Fuck is this, Michael Myers? No, bitch, it's the basement man. <laughs> then you start realizing strange shit start to happen. You wake up in the morning for work. You go outside to your driveway and your car sitting on bricks. You don't know what the fuck just happened. You call your new man and he say, I'm about to come and pick you up, baby, and take you to work. He go outside and look for his car is gone. Bitch, then all of a sudden you realize you in a Lifetime movie. Then when you finally get to work and get situated at your desk and shit, somebody calls the job and make a bomb threat. Then the whole office got to evacuate the building, bitch, and it's thunderstorming outside. Then on the same day on the other side of the city, your new nigga calling you saying, somebody keep knocking on my mother's door and running. Why are they doing that to my mother? She in a wheelchair. Then the new nigga get frustrated. He got enough common sense to realize none of this shit ain't start happening in my life till I start fucking with you. Maybe we should see other people. So then you head home sad and depressed. And before you can pick up the phone and call one of your girlfriends and tell her what happened, there's a knock at the door. You go to the door and there he is standing there with flowers. Bitch, the basement man. And all you can do is shake your head and say, mm, mm, mm. come on in. So like I said, my beautiful Teletubby Diamonds, always be wise because that's what the Bible tells us to do front and foremost when it comes to be submissive and all that when it comes to all these other rules and all that the bible first rule number one rule that it 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 it, it, it um is number one rule is to be wise be wise my child it says and make my heart rejoice how can you make god's heart rejoice how can you make jesus christ's heart rejoice by being wise and making wise decisions isn't that what we all want to do? All of us who are uh, Christians uh, uh, and, and who truly, truly love God and Christ, we want to make them happy. We want to make their heart rejoice. So even if you're in a relationship with a man and he's asking you to do something, but it's not wise, then you're going to have to uh, say Jehovah God and Jesus Christ law, it supersedes me being submissive to you because you're not making very wise decisions. So I'm going to have to override you no disrespect intended. However, I'm going to do what my Lord and Savior tells me to do, and that's to be wise. And the wise things to do, ladies, is don't find you, get yourself in these situations, situations that you, you, you have to try to get out of. You don't have to if you don't start it. You know what I mean? I, I hope I'm making myself clear. It's early in the morning. What is five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning? I have to go get me a cup of coffee so I can wake my brain up for real, for real. But anyway, just be careful. Jehovah loves you. Jesus Christ loves you so much. He died for you. I mean, after all, really. So be careful because these men of today, they are very, very dangerous. Remember, they're from Mars, planet Mars. Women are from Venus. You know, men, what is Mars? It's about war. It's about destruction. It's about tearing things down. It's not about building things up. It's not about beauty and love. When people have guns in their homes or people have to protect themselves, they're protecting themselves from who? Women? Children? No. It's these men. So you have to be careful. 
And if you still insist on dating, before you do that, sweetheart, make sure you got at least two good girlfriends so you have a part of a sisterhood and make sure you get license to carry because men are physically stronger than us, but they're not physically stronger than a bullet. So be careful. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.